Hi guys, I'm Vivian from Evan Peter Studies Center. Today I'm going to let you know um, the uh, pretty much you know the top mistake in um, PT speaking. So um, some of you may have experienced um, you know low score in speaking as well as um, you have take multiple time for the exam but you could not be able to get the good marks for your speaking. Okay, there may be some of the mistakes that you make that impact on your speaking score. So today I'm just going through what are the most popular mistakes that students make the most in their PT exam. Okay, in terms of speaking. Right, um, the first of all, which is um, read aloud. Now read aloud is the first topic in your um, speaking, right? And for read aloud, um, all you need to do is you need to read the paragraph out loud. However, um, if you notice it, most of the time students, they don't read out loud when they have the 40 seconds to prepare. Okay, so this is something is very important. When computer gives you 40 seconds to prepare and you don't use it, you don't use this time to prepare rather than you just read through the paragraph in your head. However, it doesn't work that way. Why? Because reading in your head, reading in your mind is completely different compared with reading out loud. So when you read out loud, you will experience many, um, you know, um, uh, difficulties as well as many uh, problems that you may facing. For example, um, you may hesitate. You may... Um, uh, forget to pause when you see the comma and full stop, okay? And sometimes you forget to pronounce the plural sounds. So these are the mistakes that I would say um, quite popular um, um, in the read aloud, okay? So first of all, if you do have 40 seconds to prepare, I need you guys to read out loud the paragraph, okay? Don't read in your head. Now that is the first mistake. The second mistake, there are a few new vocabularies, okay? Um, the thing in here is when, when you have a paragraph, okay, let me show you. So I'll click on read aloud, right? For example, I click on of the questions, okay? So for example, if you have a questions, right? And, um, and in terms of reading the question, some of the words you may not know how to pronounce it. Some of the word may be difficult. So for example, you may not feel confident in terms of pronounce the name of the person because you don't know, right? So for example, um, this one is quite easy, but in terms of order one, let's find out if you do have any order uh, difficult paragraph. So for example, this one, um, Right, let's see. Right, for example, some of the words you are not sure how to pronounce it or you are not that confident. So in that case, what happens is um, you will hesitate, okay? And that is something happened, I would say that. So if there are a few new vocabulary, um, some of them require challenging, difficult, then um, most of the time students, they will hesitate and drop their confidence. And that's the reason why you need to practice because if you don't practice, you won't be able to perform well in your exam. You never know. In your exam, they may give you easy paragraph and they may also give you the difficult one, right? So you need to be able to prepare for the difficult paragraph. When they give you the number, you need to have the confidence to pronounce the number, right? You need to know how to pronounce it. So in that case, you need to practice. That's the only way. Okay. So um, that is something I would say. Um, try to practice as much as you can. And um, uh, don't drop your confidence if you don't know how to pronounce it. Rather than you need to pretend like you know how to pronounce the word. Okay. Next one. Now, some of you may use some of the application, such as the Google Voice Detector, or the speech text, okay? Now this one is fine. Um, in terms of practice pronunciation, okay? However, if you don't, um, if you don't stress on every single word, the application, they won't be able to detect your pronunciation, okay? 
Um, but this is not the way computer mark in your exam. In terms of your speaking, computer mark based on um, how you pronounce the words as well as the way you read it can compute to understand the meaning. Okay, so most of them they misunderstood that this is how computer mark the pronunciation and whatever the application that you guys are using is good to practice pronunciation, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work in your exam in terms of um, the way you read the paragraph. Okay. Now, um, the other mistake is when you are reading, you don't group the words together. Okay. So this is something very important. When you have a paragraph like this, right? Um, when you are reading, you don't group the words together. So, for example, we understand the importance of supporting and restoring biodiversity. So this is a one, this is the one phrase, okay? Here is a one phrase. Now, when you are reading, you need to read as a phrases. You need to read as a group of the word. You don't read every single word. You know the function of comma and full stop, they are very important. Because this will tell you uh, where you need to pause and where you need to stop, okay? You cannot read continuously. Oh, we understand the importance of supporting and restoring biodiversity when we are teaming up with the whole reading molecular biologist. No, not like that. You have to know where you need to pause. And that will make sense to the computer when you pause it, okay? If you pause correctly, the meaning of the sentence that makes sense, okay? But if you pause incorrectly, um, computer cannot be able to understand the meaning properly, then you lose mark for your reading. Okay. That is something I want you to know. Right now, in that case, when you don't group the words together and you, um, you tend to stress on every single word. So for example, we understand the importance of supporting and restoring biodiversity. No. This is not how you read the paragraph, okay? If you read like this, you will experience very low in oral fluency, okay? So this is something I want you to understand it. And you also forget to stress on plural cells and a pause at comma and full stop. So these are the mistakes that you may make in read aloud. Okay, so the way you read the paragraph is got to be correct. Um, if it's incorrect, then um, definitely computer won't be able to give you maximum marks for your reading. Okay, right. Now I can show you one of the paragraphs that I have done. Okay. Um, in terms of IWAM, I would suggest you don't stress so much about the, um, don't stress so much about the uh, pronunciation. Okay. And because the way it's marked your pronunciation is slightly um, different and um, it's going to be a bit more harsh on your pronunciation compared to the real exam, okay? Especially your accent. So I'm not sure is it my, let me play it. The living room is... No, it's not my speaking. Let me show you a different one. Okay, so let's see how um, the way we read the paragraph, okay? The student reading in his own subject slowed down and his comprehension become less secure. He expresses himself slowly and often fails to convey his ideas exactly. He is disappointed to find that under pressure, he makes a lot of unnecessary mistakes in areas where he knows the correct language form. Okay, so the way you read the paragraph, that needs to make sense. When you say I pour, that is when I say comma and full stop. Okay, and you need to read smoothly so you can be able to get maximum oral fluency. But like I said, in terms of pronunciation, don't stress so much about it because they need um, to do some changes on Iowa. But in terms of the content, right, can computer understand you or not? That's what matter. Okay. All right, so that's it, the sample answer to how to read the paragraph. Now, next one, let's move on to repeat sentence. In terms of repeat sentence, um, most of the mistake that students make in repeat sentence is um, you guys don't practice the difficult 
sentences. Okay, you mainly practice the easy one, and that will not help you to prepare for your exam. Why? Because easy sentences everyone can do it, but a difficult sentences that what make a difference between you and the other student. Um, if you can be able to get the better score or not, which it depend on the difficult sentences. Now for the long sentences, I need you guys try your best to capture at least 50 to 60 percent of the sentence. Okay, and it needs to be correct sequence. So, for example, if I practice one of the repeat sentence, okay, and um, you never know in your exam, they may give you. Um, you know, sometimes easy sentences, sometimes um, a difficult sentences. So you never know, let's say. Um, right. So let's see, these are the report. Okay. When you see a sentence like this, right, the red color word that means is, is unclear. Okay. Um, it may can like it could be clearer, but it's just you know unclear, and sometimes computer may not be able to understand properly. Second, to get a good score for repeat sentence, you need to make sure that um, half of the sentence it need to be correct and in the um, correct sequence. Okay, so make sure you have correct sequence for half of at least half of the sentence. So that is something I will suggest you. Um, make sure you can be able to capture at least 50 to 60% of the sentences um, and correct sequence, okay? Now, you can take notes, it's completely fine, but again, um, when you are taking notes, make sure you keep eyes on the screen, okay? Because there is no longer beep sound when you are, um, like when you are, um, um, repeat the sentence. There is no beep sound to tell you that your speaking is um, started. Now, when you are practicing, so let me play one of the question. So for example. Good research presents many benefits to the real people. Okay, you won't be able to hear any of the beep sound anymore. So um, if you do take initial, you take notes, you have to keep eyes on the screen because if you don't um, repeat the sentence right away after the blue bar starting, then um, you may um, um, pretty much you may lose um, all of the sentence. Okay, you may pretty much, um, let's say after three seconds, if you don't say anything, your microphone automatically turn off. And in that case, um, you will um, definitely won't be able to say anything else. And you're going to lose um, the sentence completely. Okay. Some say they try to stress on um, pronoun every single word. Okay. Um, speak slower. That's fine. To help computer to understand you is completely fine. However, um, Sometimes you forget that repeat sentence is the topic. You need to copy and manipulate the way the speaker repeat the um, the way the speaker um, you know say the sentence. Okay, so sometimes you wait to um, you know how do you say? For example, okay, so let me close this. For example, um, so for example, this is the sentence, okay? And when you repeat the sentence, you guys repeat like this. Good research presents many benefits to the real people. No. I don't want you to repeat the sentence like this, okay? This will pretty much first impact on oral fluency. Second, um, you won't be able to get good mark in terms of speaking, okay? Because the way you repeat is not how the computer, like not how the speaker they um say the sentence, okay? So most of the time you forget um the intonation, the way the speaker say the sentence, and you just need to copy um um the speaker, okay? That is something you need to know um about how computer marks your speaking. 
Okay. So that is the mistake in repeat sentence. Now next one. Common mistake in retail lecture. Um, for retail lecture, there is nothing for you to worry. The only thing that you may need to worry is the handwriting. Because if you cannot be able to read your handwriting, no one can help you in your exam. So this is um, the most popular, not the mistake. I don't call it a mistake, but it's more about um, it's more about your, um, it can be your problem, okay? Um, it's not a mistake, but it's just a problem because if you cannot see your handwriting, no one can help you in your exam. And you will hesitate when you are speaking. So because you cannot see your handwriting, you will hesitate when you are speaking and that will impact on your oral fluency, okay? Right now, when you speak, you stress so much on each and every single word Rather than phrase the keywords together, this is something I have mentioned in Read Aloud. If you don't group the keywords together, you will lose mark for oral fluency. Okay. So that is about mistake in retail lecture. Last one, um, common mistake in describe image. Now, describe image is one of the most important topic to get good mark for your speaking, either 65 or um, 79 plus. You need to work on it. Okay, make sure you don't hesitate when you are speaking. Now, most of the times you misunderstand the content in the picture, they are not important and they can say whatever they want. Okay, no, you cannot do that. What you say is what you get. That's how it is marked for um, this cry image. Okay, when they show you a picture, they expect you to say something that in the picture, isn't it? And if you don't say things in the picture, how can the computer give you mark? Tell me. Okay. So if you say something in the picture, you will get mark for your speaking content. This one. Okay. And if you say something that outside of the box, you won't be able to get mark for your content. So that is something still they misunderstand it. Now, next one. Um, you rely too much on easy picture. Right, and then you guys don't uh, focus on the difficult one. So always remember, in your exam, don't expect to have an easy question. Rather than you may have the difficult questions, okay? So focus on the difficult picture, right? That's how you prepare for your exam. So for example, this one, they give you some information, right? Uh, what if they give you something that doesn't, um, contain any information. Mm. For example, this one. All they show you is just a picture. Well, you have to come up with something related in this picture. That's what you need to prepare for. Okay. Right. So the last one is they also, some students, they try to cover as much as information as possible. But then they, they forget that this is not how you can get the maximum marks for your content. All right, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't mean when you cover everything, you will get um, you know, a good mark for your content. So if they give you some of the picture that have lots of information, right? For example, this one, you may not be able to cover everything in 40 seconds. No, you cannot, okay? And to be able to cover everything, you may have to speak very fast to cover everything. And that doesn't help you at all. You may get good in oral fluency, but in terms of pronunciation, you may not be able to get good score. So cover all of the information you see is not a good idea. You have to find out what are the information you, sh you should mention when you are speaking. For example, Vivian told me that I just need the title of the picture. I need at least five categories in the picture. I need at least one maximum, one minimum. And then I just need to conclude it, done. So this should be enough to get me. You don't have to cover everything in one go. And that's impossible if they give you a lot of information in it. So, um, right, for example, this one, you might not cover everything in 40 seconds, right? Or for example, this one. So some of the picture, they may include so much information 
and you might not be able to finish everything in one go. So don't be greedy, just cover enough information and that, uh, that should be okay for you. Because if you try to cover everything, you may run out of time, okay? All right then, so these are all of the mistakes in speaking that pretty much, you know, may impact on your score. And if you have any question, if you want the trainer to check your speaking, um, to find out what are the problems that you're facing. So you can book a consultation and discuss with the trainer. Okay. All right, then. I, sh um, I hope this video helped you guys. And if you have any question, please send me a message on Telegram.